It is all over at Ibrox. The title fight is all over. And could it be all over for Michael Beal's time at Rangers? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. It has finished here at Ibrox. It's finished 3-1, but maybe not the way people expect it to go. It's finished Rangers 1, Aberdeen 3. Very weird game today at Ibrox. Rangers have not lost domestically at Ibrox in the league to a team... Not called Celtic since almost three and a half years ago. And now they've done it to Aberdeen today. And I thought Aberdeen actually deserved the win. And I know Scott Wright's probably going to automatically get made out to be the scapegoat because he got sent off. But... Let's be honest, up to that point, Rangers were pretty shit. They, they dominated the first half in terms of possession. They had a couple of chances, but they weren't all over Aberdeen. They weren't playing great football. They really weren't. And then when Aberdeen got into the game a bit more, it was even, and Aberdeen got the goal just seven minutes before half time. Then they got the second goal through McGrath, and then Scott Wright loses the head, gets sent off. But, I mean, I don't think Rangers win this game if Scott Wright stays on the field anyway. So, I don't think we can blame Scott Wright. I think the blame has to go on Michael Beale. I think the blame has to go on the new duds that he's signed. You look at Dessers, you look at Lammers. Players are supposed to come in. And I get Danilo's injured, but even Danilo, he's not looked great either. These new players have come in and they've looked shit. They spent a lot of money on bringing these new attacking players in. He decided he didn't want Sakala. He didn't want Cholak. Didn't offer Kent or Morelos new deals. Wanted to bring these new fucking players in. And, and these players absolutely suck. And, and you know what? So did Angels. I, I can't see Michael Beale staying now. The title's over. The title's done. The title was done before today. You look at Celtic. They've got that resilience quality. You know, the, that never die attitude. You're never, you've never beaten Celtic. Or you've never gotten a point against Celtic until the final whistle goes. And that was evident today. Looked like they were going to draw 0 now. They get that late goal that champions get late on. Then Aberdeen, pretty much in almost the last kick of the game, levelled it. And you're thinking, wow, OK. And then Celtic go right up the park and score. And, you know, that's something that Celtic do on a regular basis. When Celtic do that, you're not surprised. You'd be shocked if Rangers done that. They're not winners. They're not champions. They fucking suck. They've won, what, one trophy. They've won one trophy in, what, 12 years. Well, one league trophy in 12 years, and then you've got the Scottish Cup that they won. And even that league, I'm not going to take anything away from them, because it was a, they had a great season. But it was like the COVID season where the, the stadiums were empty. It almost felt like it wasn't real. If you look at this Rangers side since 2012, it's shambolic how the old firm is supposed to be this 50-50 rivalry. These Rangers and Celtic get spoken about in the same sentence, yet one team has pretty much won everything since then and the other teams won fuck all now we can all say that rangers went down the lower divisions which is true they did but how much longer can you use that excuse i know the rangers were using that excuse then they got back up first couple of seasons they finished third behind aberdeen maybe you can still use that excuse then gerald comes in they get a lot better they start finishing second, then they finish first, they win the league, and Celtic just completely change their entire squad. So for me, the, the, you can't even say, well, Rangers were doing in the lower divisions now. Those excuses are done. You can't use those excuses. Rangers, they've both been in the Champions League since then. Rangers made a European final. You can't keep going back to the, well, we spent four years down in the lower leagues. Fuck that. That's a long time ago, right? right? Rangers have won the league since then. They've had a better squad since then. They should be kicking on, but they're going backwards. It's it's insane. And Michael Beale, everyone spoke about him. Mike, no one gave Stephen Gerrard credit. It's actually six. Stephen Gerrard comes in, wins the league, but no one gives him fucking credit because he, he, he wanted to go to the Premier League. So what, okay? The guy's English. He wanted to go back down south to be with his family. So fucking what? And what do Rangers fans do? They degrade the guy, call, they, they say that, criticise him, you know, call him all these nasty names, take away his achievements, say that he wasn't any good, say that the only reason he was successful is because of Michael Beale. Then they get Michael Beale in. Michael Beale's going to be the man that does this, does that. I heard it all before. I remember Mark Warbington was supposed to be the man with the magic hat, whatever that was about, no fucking idea, Michael Beale comes in, and the guy sucks, last season, the football sucked, but at least he was getting the results, so you, you, like, you let it slide, I mean, this season, the football's worse, and it, the results have just completely fallen off the cliff, so, I mean, 
I think Michael Beale's gone. Uh, nobody wanted him for the past couple of weeks. Everybody's wanted him out and he's been winning. So n now that he's getting a 3-1 defeat here against Aberdeen, Rangers is fierce rivals outside of Celtic. And I know Rangers will say that they don't care about Aberdeen and that Aberdeen only care about them. But I mean, let's be real. Rangers fans don't like Aberdeen. It is a big rivalry here in Scottish football. And it's a, it's a tough defeat to um, take. But let's talk a little bit about the game here. Uh, what a shite day if you're a Rangers fan, by the way. Absolutely shite. Just earlier on today, you must have thought Celtic are going to drop points. We have a chance to go within one win of Celtic near the top of the table. And that's not happened. Celtic have actually, <laughs> Celtic have actually increased their lead by three points. And Rangers have fallen further behind St Mirren. Rangers are further behind second than they were before they started today. After St Mirren drew with Kilmarnock. Absolutely fucking insane. But, um, yeah, Ruse, I don't think he had that much. He made a couple of decent saves, but uh, it wasn't an onslaught for Rangers, okay? We can't say that Rangers were pure pummeling Aberdeen, because they weren't. Uh, when Gartenman got the goal in the 38th minute, it's a, it's a simple header, man. Where was the defence? Defence was nowhere. Uh, we get into half time. There's bagpipes playing. I don't know for what. Man. Fuck me, bagpipes. I'll be playing bagpipes for like half an hour. I bet you Rangers fans just wish the bagpipes continued to play. Uh, we get into the second half. Jamie, Jamie McGrath on the 68th minute puts Aberdeen ahead. Uh, tw doubles their lead even, they're already ahead, doubles their lead, I mean, and at this point, 2-0, you're thinking, okay, Rangers have a small chance, but it's unlikely, and then maybe that chance evaporates when Scott Wright comes out, now I don't think Rangers win the game if Scott Wright stays on the park, but considering that Seema does get a goal back in the 75th minute, maybe you can make a suggestion, there's a decent chance Rangers get a draw out of this. But with 10 men, it's always going to be tough. So Seymour's goal was pretty much cancelled out by McKenzie. There was a big VAR check. Apparently for offside. I didn't see an offside. I did see a bit of a... There was a bit of a coming together in the build-up. Now, you could argue that might be... But then you can't argue shit because we've seen what happened in the Livingston game and the Rangers fans are saying, well, that's a perfectly good goal, Seamus push. So if Seamus push is perfectly legal, then these two players having a little bit of a coming together, then that is... It's got to be perfectly legal too. Now, the goal stood. I think the goal standing was the correct decision. Aberdeen went 3-1 up. They seen out the game. Rangers did have a couple of chances. I mean, they brought Lovelace on, who, you know what? Lovelace should probably just play, because fucking Dessers is a donkey, man. The guy, the guy absolutely sucks. Nigerian nightmare. Fucking is a nightmare for Michael Beale. Uh, paying that money for him. Uh, that, that was it, really. Game finished 3-1. The fans that were let. And the crazy thing is, when the, the third goal was awarded for Aberdeen, you heard a huge cheer. And it was coming through the, the away support. Now, it's like, Surely, if an Ibrox, you know, Ibrox is packed out, you'd expect the Rangers fans to be drowning out the away opposition, but like half, more or less half the Rangers fans were gone. And I think the other half were just sitting there depressed. So, yeah, the, when Aberdeen third goal actually was officially given, man, there was a big massive cheer, which you shouldn't really have heard. But as soon as we got to the final whistle, we had a big massive boo. And I just don't see Michael Beale surviving this. He's got one more game before the winter break. I think he'll be lucky to get to that game. And I believe that game is against St Mirren. Now, I said in the preview show that St Mirren and Aberdeen, I said these were two difficult ties. And I said it was unlikely, but I said there was a possibility that Rangers could lose both of these games and Celtic could be 10 points clear going into the next international break. And Part one's already done. Rangers have already lost the first game and Celtic have won the first game. Celtic are playing Kilmarnock next week at Celtic Park. You've got the fancy Celtic to win that one. Of course they will. They'll win that. If Rangers don't beat... And I believe that game's in Paisley. And I would actually give St Mirren a good chance of beating Rangers. Rangers could be 10 points behind Celtic after just, what, 11 games? Many games we played? Eight games? I don't even think we played that many. I think it's... We played seven games. Seven games. So after eight games, there's a chance Rangers could... And it's not even a small chance. It's a big chance now that they could be 10 points behind Celtic. There's no fucking way this guy can keep his job. He can't. Michael Beale has got to go. Michael Beale's done. Michael Beale's finished. It's all over for Beale at Rangers. I'm telling you that this guy will not stay. He can't stay. 
Uh, it could have looked so different tonight. Yeah, it could have been Rangers possibly two points behind Celtic. But would have, could have, should have. It's not. And I think he will pay the price for that. Now, Rangers are in the, the semi-final of the Fire Play Cup. They did get a good win over Real Betis. Will that have any impact on deciding whether or not he gets the chop? It's the only thing saving him. Surely, if he'd have lost to Betis, if he'd have been knocked out the cup by now, I don't think he'd be here. I don't even think he'd have made today's game as manager. But possibly that is something that is keeping him alive with a chance. Uh, we also know that he's brought in all these players. Maybe they don't want to get rid of the manager because they'll need to rebuild. Can even afford to get rid of Michael Beale. Not entirely sure how much it would take to pay him off, how much he's contracts worth or whatnot but at this at this state i mean at this point can they even keep them you know can they even keep them i don't know and then they're, they're going to be a lot of empty seats as well they're probably losing it in revenue because i just don't think people are showing up especially after today um you know i think the next couple of games that rangers play if he's still the manager you could be seeing a lot of empty seats at ibrox anyway guys that is it for the review uh rangers won aberdeen free big big game Aberdeen have really turned it around lately, so fair play to Barry Robson. I still don't think he's the right man for the job. I, I don't think Barry Robson should be in charge of Aberdeen, but he did do good last season, and he's beginning to get results now, so I think you've got to stick with him. You, you give him a chance. Aberdeen now move up to 7th in the table. They are on 8 points just outside the top 6. Uh, Rangers remain in 3rd, 12 points, uh, 2 points in front of Hearts in 4th. <laughs> Fuck me, and three points behind St Mirren in second. Feeling sick, guys, but I'm sure I'm not feeling as sick as Michael Beale. So that's where we're going to end that one right there. I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, Scottish Football Review Show tonight. Going to watch sports scene, uh, see what happened tonight, and then we'll we'll talk more about the other games. So looking forward to that, guys. Catch you in the next one. Been Fog Fit, but thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and say some prayers for Michael Beale because I think he might need them. Till next time. Peace.